Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the Screen Factory Collector's Edition Blu-ray of RoboCop 2. Now, before I get into this review, I want to give a huge shout out to a good friend of mine, Mike M, for sending me this Blu-ray. He sent it to me as a gift a couple years ago, so I want to give him huge props and kudos for doing just that. So thanks mike for making this video possible so this has a 2k remaster of the uh interpositive of the film and take it from me as a fan of the movie this is the best robocop 2 has ever looked or sounded this transfer is pristine it's clean and it really does rock uh, the sound mix is booming and loud and just as epic as the film is in multiple different moments. And overall, it is an upgrade over the uh, previous uh, remaster. Didn't listen to the audio commentary of Paul M. Salmon because it just didn't interest me. The uh, This disc has two 30-minute long documentaries with different interviews with various different cast and crew um they're not all exactly 30 minutes they're probably 30 minutes or or maybe a little bit over 30 minutes but they're not feature length by any means so the first one is called corporate wars the making of robocop 2 it goes a little bit in depth on the uh production history of the film it talks about the original script by Ed Neurmeyer and Michael Miner, Corporate Wars. It then talks about how Orion put this film on the fast track because they really wanted it to come out in theaters as soon as possible so that they could line their pockets as fast as possible to stay afloat financially because they were in deep shit after a string of box office bombs. Talks about how... Tim Hunter was the original director, the director of River's Edge, but he was not really uh, that into the direction the film was taking, and he dropped out essentially soon, like really soon before the cameras were to start rolling, so they had to scramble for a last-minute replacement, and they brought Irvin Kirshner out of re semi-retirement to direct... Talked about how Frank Miller was on the set every day, writing pages, and was really trying to make things work despite things just going to hell in a handbasket. It really did bring to light how hellish the production of this movie was. And it also brought to light how we should appreciate the film more for what it is, because a lot of the stuff that people point to as problems with the movie were unavoidable issues because of the production and how chaotic it was and how they didn't really have enough time to fine tune things because Orion was like, get this in theaters. Now the clock is ticking and they even pushed the release date up. So there was even more pressure put on people involved with the film. So corporate wars, this part has interviews with like Paul M. Salmon, Nancy Allen, um, Galen Korg, I don't know if I'm saying her last name right or not, but yeah, um, it also has interviews with uh, Tom Noonan, other people involved with the cast or the crew, um, no interviews with Hob, no Gabriel Damon interview, which is too bad, I would, like, would have liked to have he heard from him, um, and I don't think they could have gotten anything with Lena Rosamond because I don't think he's I don't think he was with us anymore. Although I could be wrong. I want to make sure I'm right. I don't want to like. Yeah, he passed away in 2008, so there's no way to get his thoughts on it. Um. So yeah, you have some some uh, interviews with some of the cast and crew. Uh, Phil Tippett's also interviewed, and he's a joy to watch. And to listen to, as always, is one of those guys where you just love hearing him talk because he's just so charismatic and also has so much wonderful stories to tell. He has so many great stories to tell, and this film's no exception. 
I mean, I, I got to give him a lot of props because he went through absolute hell shooting this. Like, the guy got sick, he got bronchitis or something, and then he got a cold, and then he broke a rib. Like, like he really put in overtime with this production. There's also some other, uh, like I said, some other cast and crew that are interviewed, some people who uh, worked on the effects. <clears throat> you get some archive stuff, like um, some uh, different sort of home movies, essentially, that were shot by Paul M. Salmon on the set of the film that are that are spliced in into the documentary at times like an interview with the with the producer John Davison uh, some stuff with Peter Weller and so on and so forth it's a short but sweet uh documentary it definitely does put into perspective the weight of the production it puts into perspective the just amount of trials and tribulations that the cast and crew went through while doing it it shows you that while there were a good amount of people who enjoyed their time working on the film there were some that weren't that enthusiastic like nancy allen and tom noonan who said that in a respectful manner though they weren't shitting on the film like the uh folks that were interviewed for the leviathan blu-ray they didn't shit on the movie they just talked about how they weren't necessarily happy with certain things and their time on the film was not as great as they would have hoped in the most respectful way they possibly could, which goes a long way. And, you know, there were some other fun, fun stories and stuff that was mentioned involving the production, although there's not a whole lot of like juicy details because of the fact that it's it's just a 30 minute long documentary for the most part and that's not including i mean if you take away the various different scenes from the film that are spliced in to pad the running time with the interviews it's even shorter then you have uh machine parts which is the the fx of robocop 2 this one mainly focuses on the visual effects so focuses on the RoboVision. So you have an interview with Peter Caron and uh, the guy who worked, I think it's Kutch Haver is the guy's last name. And he worked on the visuals and RoboVision for the first movie. So they returned to work on the, the RoboVision for the second film. You also have Phil Tippett. He shares some more stories. And then you have various different people who were a part of the massive crew that worked on the stop motion effects so if you like stop motion effects and you like special effects and stuff like that this is this is a fun featurette this is a fun little documentary um it got a little bit tedious near the end because they kind of started to say a lot of the same things and they use a lot of technical jargon but overall i i, I did like it um then you have a like eight minute short with the um, one of the guys who worked on the Robocop suit called Robo Fabricator. That one was interesting. I liked it. It was in, it was it was eight minutes, but it didn't feel like it was a throwaway eight minutes. I learned things and it was a, there was a fun story involving how this uh, this guy was being courted by Robotine to work on the first movie, but he turned him down and then Robotine trying to get him to work on the second movie. And he's like wondering why that's the case. Cause he's more of a prop guy. And it's just, there's just a fun story involving how he and Robotine got together and finally uh, did a Robocop movie. And then he talks about all these different things about, you know, how he helped, you know, put together the various different, things involving the Robocop suit that make it click together and move in the way that it did. And there were some really nice insights on that particular aspect of the production, which you normally don't hear a lot of when it comes to like 
behind the scenes. You don't really hear a lot of that kind of stuff. So that was really interesting to me. Then you had OCP Declassified, which is like 45 minutes of Paul M. Salmon's home movies. Like he shot this, these interviews and this footage uh, for the press and, and for himself as sort of a historical document of the production of RoboCop 2. There's a really lengthy interview with, uh, so you have interviews with uh, John Davison, you have interviews with Dan O'Harely, you have an interview with Peter Weller, you have an interview with Nancy, I think, I don't, I think Nancy Allen is interviewed. Um, I don't know if Tom Noonan is. So there's a bunch of different mini interviews that are, that are in this. There's also some behind the scenes stuff. You get to see some actual shots of the dream sequence in the graveyard. So you know that it actually was shot. It wasn't just a publicity photo or anything, which makes the fact that it's lost. That footage is lost even more frustrating and disappointing. And you get some shots of the PSA that I guess he shot with the stuntman as Robocop talking to kids and saying, you know, drugs are bad. You know, drugs are whack. Don't do them. It's pretty cringe inducing to watch, to be honest. And then there is a lengthy demonstration of the uh, cane brain in a tube effect and how that's put together and how you set it up by the effects guy. And that was interesting to a point, but then it got a little bit uh, old after a while and I had to fast forward through it. But I mean, there's some there's some genuinely nice interviews Peter Weller talking about how he was inspired by Eisenstein uh, to do the loud exaggerated movements of Robocop in the first movie and how talking about how Kirshner wanted him to amp that up even more with even more loud robotic movements in, in the film even Dan O'Harely in, in his interview was talking about how the character, excuse me, the character of RoboCop, I mean the character, not, just, not, the, not the character of RoboCop, sorry, uh, had a little bit of indigestion there, probably, I probably was thinking about RoboCop 3 again, that's probably why, um, but anyway, so he's talking about his character of the old man and how different it is from the first movie while kind of staying in character. So it was kind of a fun interview. So yeah, I mean, it was 45 minutes. Some of it was filler, but there were other stuff that was uh, definitely worth watching. I wish there was a featurette or something from back in the day. I think they exist, but for some reason they weren't able to find one in good enough quality to put on here. I also wish that the work print was included, even if it's not in the best of quality it would still be nice to have. And this also includes the theatrical trailer, the teaser trailers, a TV spot, the one that has, you know, maximum, you know, is like robo action, robo. It's, it's so, it's so corny, but, but I love it though. Like maximum thrash. It, it's like, I mean, I've never heard those two words put together before. But when I first saw the TV spot for RoboCop 2, I was like, wow, Maximum Thrash. That's that's something else. Sounds like a band from like the thrash metal days. Um, but yeah, so there's also a still gallery. But that's really the features. They're not extensive. I would have liked to have seen more because I feel, I feel that this film, there's more to it that isn't really covered. Uh, would have liked to see more interviews with some of the other cast and crew, but I have to admit what is here is a lot better than the nothing that was there for any other release for the film. So for that, got to give it a, a recommendation. And I also got to give it a thumbs up because I, I mean, I'm not expecting Weller to agree to do any interviews, so I wasn't expecting that, but 
for what they had in terms of extra features, some of it rang a little hollow, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Plus the transfer is great. So would I recommend this Blu-ray? Yes. Yes, I would recommend this Blu-ray. I would recommend uh, Scream Factory's release of RoboCop 2 because it is an upgrade in terms of the transfer over the previous release of the film on Blu-ray or DVD. And it does have some extra features that aren't completely worthless. And it doesn't involve everyone from the production just shitting on the movie. So you do learn some things about the production. You do see some behind-the-scenes clips and some cool shots in the, in when it comes to that. And, and there are some fun stories that are that are told and shared by some of the cast and crew. So, yeah, I, I definitely do recommend it, and I did like it. I did enjoy it, and I wasn't too disappointed by it, despite the fact that I would have liked to have seen a little bit more uh, interviews and a little bit more content in terms of the overall features. But anyway, that's my review of the Blu-ray of RoboCop 2. Thank you for watching. And thank you for your cooperation.